So welcome to today's lesson, which is on half-life. So there's two learning objectives for today's lesson. Understand what the term half-life is, and understand that it's different for different isotopes, and use this concept of half-life to do some calculations on radioactivity. So half-life. So the activity of a sample, uh, which is radioactive, changes over time. It decreases, goes down. And the half-life of a radioactive sample is the average time taken for half the original mass of the sample to the K. So if we look at the graph here, we have uh, the isotope cobalt-60. And so the half-life, if it's starting off at 100 grams of cobalt-60, or is it 10 grams? Okay, starting off at 10 grams of cobalt-60, it's the amount of time it takes to get down to 5 grams of cobalt-60. Because what's going to happen is that cobalt-60 is going to decay into another radioisotope. And here are some examples of some half-lives of isotopes. So they can range from the very big or long, from uranium-238, which has a half-life of 4,500 million years, to the very small. So for example, helium-5, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 29 seconds. Basically instantaneous. It's decay. So there's two ways you can define half-life. You can either define it in terms of activity of the source, so the half-life of a radioactive source would be the amount of time it takes for the activity of that radioactive source to be halved. Okay, so if you start off with 100 bacchlael, for example, how much time would it take to get down to 50 bacchlael? And in terms of number of nuclei, which is what the cobalt-60 example was, would be how much time it takes for half the cobalt-60 to decay into another isotope. So if we start off with 100 grams of cobalt-60, how much time does it take to get down to 50 grams of cobalt-60? And how do we find this number out? Well, you plot a graph of either number of nuclei or the uh, radioactive decay rate against time. And if you do that, you can therefore work out how long it takes on the y-axis to get to half that initial value, go across to the point in the graph, then go down on the x-axis, and you can then determine the time it took for that half that decay to occur. So a more accurate value, as it says, can be obtained by repeating the method for another value for the initial nuclei or another value for the initial um, decay rate, and then take an average. Okay, so those are the kind of questions that you'll be doing in the exam.